that I went to my annual well woman checkup and found out that I had osteopenia, at least the beginning of osteopenia, and that is the precursor to osteoporosis. And at about the same time, I had a friend of mine who is maybe eight years older than I am in her 70s, and she fell in her kitchen, just stumbled, broke a hip in her right arm, and ended up in a nursing home. And I just really don't ever want that to happen. I want my bones to be strong. I've always wanted to lift weights, and I thought, hey, with this beginning of osteopenia, it would be a good time to go ahead and get that accomplished. And the neat thing is that I think it has taken my body from skinny and fat, they call that skinny fat, to just a little bit more toned up, a little bit less saggy, my skin seems to be a little firmer, everything just seems to have firmed up nicely. Now let me go ahead and show you the before and after pictures from my first eight weeks of working out. Here are the before and after pictures of the front of my body. And there you can see on January 22nd, I had my first before picture and my tummy is a little bit more saggy in the before picture. My thighs maybe look a little bigger. That's a little hard to tell though. And perhaps it looks in the after picture like maybe my waist is a little more whittled in. My tummy is not quite so baggy and saggy in places. It's firming up, it looks like. Next is a picture of the right side of my body. And as you can tell in the before picture on January 22nd, I'm looking like I'm starting to become a pear. In other words, the top of my body is kind of slender and then it gets wider around the abdomen area and the butt is rather saggy and baggy there. And then in the after picture, things are tightening up. It looks like the abdomen is coming in some. Here is the left side of my body and you can just have an overall sense when you see the left side that I'm becoming a little taller and leaner looking because my abdomen area, the upper and the lower abdomen are pulling in. Now we get to the very interesting changes and that is primarily in the back of my body. And here on January 22nd, you can see the difference before and after in the waist. The waist is definitely coming in, you can see on the back of my body. And the buttocks are really bad in the before picture. And then just eight weeks later, things are really starting to shape up in that area. It's not there yet, but it's definitely on its way. Now, those were really good results for the first eight weeks. I was very pleased with that. You couldn't really tell too much in the front, maybe a little bit in the sides, but basically in the buttocks area, I didn't know how bad it had gotten. And in fact, after I saw those before pictures, I said to my husband, I had old lady butt, didn't I? <laughs> and my husband, who is so nice to me and really will practically never tell me the truth in terms of anything to do with appearance because, I don't know, he's just super nice to me in that area. But he did say, yeah, you definitely did have baggy old lady butt. And while it is not perfect now and it never will be for, for reasons that I will share with you here, it is greatly improved. And I do think that's a nice thing. Okay, let me tell you how I got into weight training. And it was with a set of books by a man named Michael Matthews. He's a young, very good looking young man. I'll put his picture up so you can see him. Very attractive to look at. But basically how it happened is just before Christmas last year, I needed to get my son Colin a little more Christmas. And I looked on Amazon and it never occurred to me to do this, but I just put in the search bar, fitness gifts for men. And some things came up like a little headband thing. I got it for him. He actually works on a bike trainer about two hours a day because he loves biking. And so he's really into aerobics and all of that kind of thing. But in that list was a book called The Little Black Book of Workout Motivation. And it was by Michael Matthews, who I'd never heard about at that time. So I ordered that book for Colin. And then after he got it, he said it was so good that I ordered a copy for myself and I got it on Audible because I like to listen to books, especially when I'm weight training in the morning, I listen to Audible books. And so I listened to his book and it is fabulous. And if you're thinking about getting into a workout routine, especially weight training, I would highly recommend that you get that book and I'll put the link below. But basically that book gave the physiology behind weight training and it really let me know that what he says goes <laughs> because there's a lot of misinformation out there about fitness and working out. And uh, you can really tell through listening to that book that he has the key to being able to weight train and really get the type of body that you want to get. 
in addition to the fact that that book is just extremely motivational, just in terms of other aspects of your life as well, not just weight and fitness, but every aspect of your life that you would perhaps like to improve. Okay, so I got that book, and then I got his second book, which was called Thinner, Leaner, and Stronger, and this is not that book. This is the one-year challenge for women thinner, leaner, and stronger than ever in 12 months. The first book that I read was an audible book. I listened to it. That book gave you some workout tips and workouts, and so that was a really good introduction. But this book is actually a one-year journal, and all you do is you use this book to chart each workout. You put the number of reps, the weight on each workout, that is a one day workout there. So one thing Michael Matthew really recommends is to go to the gym and work out. And I have never really had great luck doing that. At one point, Alan and I loved doing yoga and there was a fabulous yoga teacher in town. And we would go Saturdays and Sundays and do a yoga class at the Y. And her name was Flora, our yoga teacher. And she was incredible, but she has passed on, unfortunately. But other than that, I have just never been good at getting ready and getting out the door and going to the workout center on a regular basis. So I knew if I was going to incorporate weight training into my life, I would have to do it at home in my little exercise room here. And this is my exercise room. And I'll show you around and show you the items that I purchased in order to start this weight training program. And it really wasn't very expensive at all. I think everything was under about $300 altogether. And I purchased all of those items on Amazon. And I'll show you those right now. Look around my little home gym. And this is a little ab machine, not really a machine, but a tool that I use to do crunches. And I have had that probably since the 80s. And in fact, I wore out that neck part of it that you put your neck on. And I went to the fabric store and got some faux vinyl and re remade it because I absolutely love that. I think it's great to do ab work. And I do that every morning. Michael Matthews didn't recommend that per se, but I kept that in my workout routine. I have some cardio machines here. I have a rower and a recumbent bike and elliptical. I'm using the elliptical lately. I pretty much go back and forth on that. But in terms of the weight training, none of those things were for the weight training. This is the first thing I purchased, which is a weight bench. And I think it was only around $60 and it is a great one. And I'll put a link to that. I bought it on Amazon. And then I got this squatting rack, which come to find out I really didn't need that much, but it does help to have the barbell up there. If it's a heavy weight and you're going to perhaps be squatting, it's easier to grab it from the squatting rack because it's a little safer. And I always keep 20 pounds on that. And that's the weight that I use when I do my bicep curls is the 20 pounds there. And here's a little tip here. These little clips are only $3 a set and I ordered them in blue. And basically they replace the set that comes with most barbells and they're super easy to switch out your weights with. Really love those. Got my little happy sign there. And these are my dumbbells. And at first my husband said, oh, let's order this $300 set of these adjustable dumbbells that go up to like 100 pounds each. And thank God I did not do that. I think these were maybe $20, maybe $35 somewhere in there but they go up to about 25 pounds together and they're wonderful and that's what I use largely for my arms. And then these are the other two weights that came in the weight set. Those are the 10 pound weights that came in the weight set and those are 15 pounds each and those are 20 pounds each and you just combine the weights in ways to get the weight that you need but those were great and they were extremely reasonable. Then I have an exercise mirror, but that's been here for a long time. And then I have no excuses up there. So that is a look at my whole workout setup, but you don't need any of that almost to do the weights. We just need the weights and the weight bench. Basically, Michael Matthews says that as women, we will not bulk up and that's everyone's biggest kind of problem with the idea of weightlifting for women. Everybody thinks they're going to get bulky. So you hear a lot of people saying, go with a lot of reps and light weights. And I'd always heard that too. And I do the five pound weights and never really get great results on my arms, for instance. Well, what Michael Matthews says is that you really need to go with the highest weight possible to exhaustion, basically. And so he has you do three sets of eight to 10 reps. And when you get to where you can do 11 and 12 reps at a certain weight, you increase the weight. And for the first eight weeks, I followed that. But I will say that I did bulk up. My arms got bulky and I looked chunky. I wish I had a picture of it to show you. But what Michael Matthews says is that when you get that bulky look, 
It basically means that you're not lean enough, you need to lose some weight because you're developing muscle on top of fat. And I was definitely doing that because I did not want to lose weight. Because as we get to be more mature, we need the weight that we have to plump out the wrinkles in our face and make us look good. I really didn't feel like I needed to lose weight, so I was just putting muscle on top of fat. And I have a situation with my shoulder. I have kind of pain in my shoulder and I was going ahead and doing his workouts just as prescribed and a lot of them are shoulder workouts where you're lifting weights like this and in trying to lift those heavy weights that he recommended, it was just really killing my shoulder. And I realized that I was never going to be a professional bodybuilder and I have to admit that that black bathing suit, I ordered that from Amazon that I am wearing in my before and after pictures, Looking back, I really regret that I ordered that bathing suit, but you know, there it goes. When I first started this, I thought, oh, I had seen this wonderful 80 plus year old weightlifter on YouTube. And I thought, I'm going to get into this. I'm going to be a real weightlifter. I'm going to wear the little black suit, the little black trunks, and I'm going to actually really go into this full force. But then I realized that with my shoulder, I really could not do that. So I had to modify. So basically what I did was I took Michael Matthews workouts and I kind of removed the shoulder ones because it was hurting my shoulder and I concentrated more on biceps and triceps and the gluteus workouts, which are wonderful. And if you'd like to see how I improved my butt in eight weeks, I will be glad to do a workout video and show you those butt exercises because they are fabulous. And I also lightened up on my weights because I really didn't want to get that bulky look over fat so I did keep my weights lighter. I use about 15 pounds in lunges and that kind of thing. I use about 10 pounds on arms and triceps, and I use about 50 pounds on some of those buttocks exercises, but I'm not going up to 70 and 80 pounds as I was in the very beginning. And in the very beginning on my arms, I was trying to lift like 35 and 40 pounds, and that was just too heavy for me and it hurt my shoulder. So now I have been doing these workouts for 15 weeks. I took some more pictures at 12 weeks of my workout. I took them at eight weeks and at 12 weeks, but really at 12 weeks, my body looked about the same as it did at eight weeks. And you know, I'm never going to have a perfect body. There are always things about our own bodies that we would like to change, but I just basically feel good that I'm helping to avoid osteoporosis someday, I certainly hope. I really love these workouts. My body has just really firmed up. It just doesn't feel so loose and jiggly anymore. I've gotten some good definition in my arms, which I really appreciate that, because as those of you who watch my channel know, I really do like to wear the sleeveless in the summer, and I always hope to be able to do that. Even when I'm 70 and 80, I hope to be able to go sleeveless. I don't know if that's going to happen, but we will see about that. So anyway, if you have weightlifting tips you would like to share, please share them in the comments section below the video. Or if you have diet or exercise tips or regimens that are working for you, please share that too because we have a great community of women here and we're constantly sharing our good ideas with each other in order to improve each other's lives. And if you're not a subscriber, I hope you'll subscribe and click that little bell that will just notify you of my future videos. And if you can give this video a thumbs up and or share it with a friend, that would be great too. Now, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day, and I'll come in a little closer for that. As I mentioned, I always listen to kind of inspiring books on tapes when I'm doing my workout training in the morning on Audible. And one of them I've been listening to is called The Gratitude Diaries, and I'll put a link to that below. And it is the story of an author who decided she complained too much, she was not grateful enough, and so she decided to really put gratitude at the front of her life for a whole year and to journal that process and also to share the science that supports this outlook of trying to add more gratitude to our life. And so in one of her chapters, in fact, the one that I heard just this morning, she talks about complaining and how complaining over time can really hurt the quality of our life. And I realized that especially with this COVID situation lately, I had really become kind of a complainer. I would look outside and think, well, I have to shelter at home and it's a yucky day outside, yuck. And I would complain about things. And I realized that's kind of silly. I have a home to shelter in. It's a wonderful home. I'm really happy about that. 
the rain coming is a good thing because it helps my lawn and all the lawns in the neighborhood look better and helps the plants. So what she advises is to give yourself a no complaining program and to start it with just the one day and to eventually work up to where you've got 30 days of no complaints. But basically what you do is you start your day and the minute you start to think about complaining, you switch it to something that is gratitude or you say nothing at all about that complaint. So I plan to do that and I'll let you know in future videos how that goes. So until I see you next time, have a wonderful gratitude filled life.